All right, you government workers. Those of you who were quite upset at my take on Senate Bill 5, quite upset with me. Here is where I show you my consistency again. Because as I said, it was nothing personal. It's just we don't have the money. And we need to, we need to rethink how we do things. That everybody and every way who gets money from the taxpayers, we have to scale back. We have to think of new ways. And it's not just you. It's not just you, the average firefighter or cop or teacher. As I said, you're part of it. You're one of the pieces of the puzzle. But there is a lot more to cutting spending. And you people, you government workers, you unionized government workers that have been on the front line and taken a lot of slings and arrows, at least in the press, over the last few weeks, you should be outraged today. You should be disgusted. Here's your argument. This is why you should be upset. Because of the amount of money that is wasted. The amount of money that is spent in other ways. Sure, the trolley cars won. But we've got some new ones. UC has agreed to pay David Stern. He was uh, the dean of the College of Medicine and vice president for health affairs. He resigned and they have agreed to pay him a severance, $900,000, $900,000 as a severance. Now, firefighters, cops, teachers, government employees, as critical as I have been, I must say, $900,000 Sure, it shouldn't have been spent in the first place on a severance package for somebody who made hundreds of thousands of dollars. So it should just not be spent. But if it has to be sent, spent somewhere, I would much rather you have it than David Stern as a severance. He's officially been on leave for months. Then his contract negotiations, they, uh, they started, started unraveling. Wasn't working out. So he signed a severance agreement on the 8th, a couple days ago. He'll get one year's pay, according to his contract, which is $601,000 a year. He'll get $236,000 to buy out the rest of his contract running through 2012, plus his tenured faculty spot, and $60,000 in accrued vacation pay. $900,000 severance. For a guy who already makes $600,000 a year. Now, as I said, we got to cut. We've got to look at everybody and look at everything. But I would say a guy who's been making $600,000 can absorb the hit a little bit better than the cop who's making $45,000 a year. $900,000 for a severance package. Do you know what my severance package will be? Get the hell out. That's what it'll be. Shut the hell up. You know what it'll be? They will call me and say, hey, doc, we want to meet downstairs for lunch. We'll go to Skip's downstairs and... uh, yeah, by the way, give us your key and we'll have somebody take all of your things, throw them into a big box. You can pick them up Tuesday. That's it. There'll be no severance. Now, I'm not complaining about that. I knew that coming in. I get that. That's what the private sector does. $900,000 for a severance package? This is what you should be marching on. You public government employees, you unionized government employees that have been this upset, And as I said, listen, you've got to absorb it too. This is your argument. It's not against SB5. It's this. Because if they weren't paying $900,000 in severance for somebody to go away, we wouldn't have the financial troubles we're in. You might be looked at a little less closely. $900,000 to go away. Now, I don't know the particulars of his contract. Maybe the contract he signed said that there would be some sort of severance. Maybe that was initially part of it. In which case, you see, 
they had to just uh, go along with what the contract said. The board of trustees would have been bound by that contract, and maybe they tried to negotiate it down. Maybe his contract said he was supposed to get more. Maybe he said he was supposed to get less. But if he did have a contract that laid the foundation for this huge severance pay, then the mistake was made when they offered the contract initially. See, if, if his contract didn't say anything about severance, then it should be get the hell out. If his contract did mention severance, then you should be ashamed for signing it in the first place. He's more important as the dean of College of Medicine than a cop, a firefighter. He's more important. He's more valuable. Apparently not because you want him to leave. You couldn't reach a deal. This comes at a time when UC is preparing for state budget cuts of 15%, maybe more. And they offered him, and he accepted, $900,000 in severance. Stock Thompson, 700 WLW. $900,000 a year. What's the average cop, firefighter, teacher make? Well, it depends on where and what. But let's take a a modest, reasonable salary of $50,000 a year that, that a lot of public workers, a lot of government workers make. A lot of them make even less. Some make more. Let's take $50,000. You could fund two $50,000 a year jobs for nine years. Nine years with just the severance, just throwing away the money to get rid of somebody that you see is paying. $900,000. Tax dollars well spent, huh? Hamilton County's new prosec- uh, public defender is going to get a raise, essentially, over her predecessor. She's going to make $117,500 a year. More than court judges, uh, more than other public defenders. Over the past three years, Hamilton County has managed to slash $62 million from its budget. They've cut about 1,400 jobs. Even though most of the workers in the county, they haven't gotten raises in three years, she's going to get 117,000. That seems a little high to me. What would you think a public defender should make? I'm thinking the ceiling would be about $80,000 a year. She's making 117, more than her predecessor. Why? Why is she getting a raise going in when everybody else is being asked to cut? These are the issues. It's everywhere. The spending problems are everywhere. Well, you know what I've heard throughout the entire debate when it comes to the government employees unions? It it comes down to, well, we'd be willing, the rich people like Michael Moore, the fat, rich socialist Michael Moore, people like him come out and say, well, I'd be willing to pay more taxes. I hear it from Hollywood all the time. I'd pay more taxes. Sure, I'd pay more taxes if it meant saving everything, blah, blah, blah. But the truth is they're not. I have a guest coming up next after the news at 11.06. It's going to explain some of the creative ways that Hollywood celebrities have been hiding money. You'd think they'd be willing to pay it. They always say they'd be willing to pay their taxes. Share some of their loopholes coming up next on the Home of the Reds, 700 WLW. It's Doc Thompson on 700 WLW. I'm going to get some of your calls coming up on uh, the severance pay that UC offered to David Stern. And to um, and and also what the new uh, defender in Hamilton County is going to make. You think that's uh, really the way you're? They say Daniel, I'm at David Stern. Uh, where your money should be spent? Wouldn't you rather go to the police and the firefighters? Five one three seven four nine seven thousand eight hundred. The big one. We'll get some calls coming up in just a minute. Right now, though, David Seelig joins me now. How are you, David? Oh, fine, thank you, and thanks for having me on your program. It's no, a pleasure. Uh, thank you for being here. It's really interesting. Um, I, you're, are you in Colorado? No, sir. I'm in New York City, also known as Rome. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Does Colorado have really uh, low tax rates, uh, low property tax rates? Certainly, by comparison to some other states, absolutely. Well, I mean, anything by comparison to New York would be, but I'm saying, are, are they except, Are they the lowest? Because the way I understand it, there are some people with hundreds of acres and vacation homes that are worth millions of dollars, and they pay just hundreds of dollars in taxes. That doesn't sound quite right. <laughs> 
Yeah, I think what's happening here is you're referring to this uh, fraudulent credits for farming and production of uh, of foodstuffs, correct? Yeah, uh, Tom Cruise. Interesting story. Tell me about him and his house uh, near Telluride. Remarkable. I think what has happened is, now a lot of people are calling this a loophole. It is not a loophole. Uh, This is just a misapplication of the Internal Revenue Code. In other words, let's say you are a farmer or you grow various foodstuffs and such. The Internal Revenue Code has a provision uh, to allow for certain credits and reductions. So you can, you know, you can compete and you can make ends meet. That's not uncommon. A lot of industries and fields are, have some favorable tax writing. What this has gone askew is when you have an actor wishing to exploit this uh, by claiming to be something that they're really not. It would be as if I claimed to be a uh, brain surgeon and try to deduct my research in the field. So Tom no Cruise, yeah. he's claiming to be a farmer, essentially? <laughs> It, it seems to be, and I have a theory on that, sir, uh-huh. how this came to be. Uh, I don't believe this is necessarily a machination of Mr. Cruz, rather than it's not uncommon for these celebrity types to surround themselves with sycophants who are just so eager and desirous to please that they'll peddle any old crap. And when you, you meet, a, let's say, a legitimate accountant or a legitimate attorney, they say, absolutely not. And these, uh, you know, uh, actors and musicians and such, they're so hypersensitive, they don't like the word no, they get rid of the good guy or the good woman, and then the alternative, they get this smiling yes man who ultimately gets them in trouble. We have, uh, we have pretty high taxes in Ohio. Our property taxes are pretty high as well. Tell me about, uh, and I want, uh, as you explain what Tom Cruise owns outside of Telluride and what he pays in taxes, I want everybody to compare it with what they pay for what I'm sure is probably a modest house. Most people probably at best have a couple hundred thousand dollar home, and they probably pay thousands of dollars a year in taxes. What does Tom Cruise have? Well, I'm not entirely certain as to what he has and what he is entitled to, but I do have to say it appears to be... uh, exploitive what they have done with the Internal Revenue Code. In other words, they have taken a legitimate provision in the code and wishing to, you know, o- avoid their tax liability have taken a position, and it appears on its face, it appears that they don't have standing to do so, you know. Well, let's, uh, let's, uh, run, down, let's run down what he does have and the appearance of what he's paid. Um, yeah. Northwest of Telluride, Colorado, he has about 248 acres in a region mm-hmm. where there's a bunch of vacation homes. They're very, it's very high-end, right. um, very beautiful. Yes, and sir. it's reported that he has paid property taxes of $400. Yeah, that's, that's very true, sir. Um, the whole issue is, remember, they say it's not over until the fat lady sings. Mm-hmm. Well, why don't we wait until they get their first assessment from the Internal Revenue Service and the great state of Colorado? to see if this chicanery will pass the smell test. Uh, My feeling is, and this is just a visceral feeling, it will not. Because, you know, as I said, uh, a couple of plants or a couple of shrubs or a wild blueberry bush does not a farmer make. And I do not believe that they will carry the day. And his argument is that he has, what, sheep on it or something? (laughs) He may very well, you know. I mean, I once looked out of my back window and I saw a bunny rabbit hopping along. That it makes you a rabbit makes, farmer, right? Yeah, hardly makes me a herder of livestock. It looks as though he paid just uh, the four hundred dollars in taxes. Um, he paid eighteen million mm-hmm. uh, for the property, and um, he pays just eleven thousand in residential property taxes for where the <laughs> land is. Nine point seven million dollar home is located. <laughs> That seems a little off. I would bet there's, it's not uncommon for people here to be approaching that a year, and they probably don't have even a half a million dollar home. Sure. Well, that's very true. And like I said, uh, you know, I'm sure as we speak, because this sort of publicity, publicity will have surely gotten the attention of some very diligent revenue officers and tax examiners, and they'll be going through line by line by line chapter and verse, and if, in fact, Mr. Cruz has 
erred from the path, the straight and narrow, which it appears they have, uh, he's going to be called to the carpet and he's going to have to pay. And let's find out how long this nonsense has been going on for. Because remember, a lot of people, they take a position they're not entitled to, they get away with it, and then they convince themselves that they're somehow entitled to it. And that just won't wash, not when you're caught. See, this is, this is what I don't understand, David. People like Tom Cruise and Goldie Hawn, these are the people who always tell me that mm-hmm. I need to spend more of my money via higher okay. taxes and stuff on saving everything and everybody around the world. And yet, and they, they volunteer in interviews. I'm willing to pay more taxes. Fine. I don't care about higher taxes. You know, when they debate over whether or not we should tax those people who make over $250,000 a year, they volunteer it. So why, if the reports are, are accurate, would they try to get away with paying less property tax? Well, I think it's a case of do as I say and not as I do. And these are our self-appointed moral uh, superiors. And what's good for the goose is not good for the gander. So these phonies, these Hollywood phonies, as it were, uh, are very happy to dictate what you should do. You should keep your house warm in the summer and cold in the winter. Uh, ride, share, do everything you can, make yourself very uncomfortable, you know, because of global warming and some other malarkey. But we'll continue to do whatever we'd like, and uh, that's just tough because we make an occasional good movie or sing a song that somebody likes. Talk- and that's the long and short of it, sir. Talking with David Seelig, he is a tax practitioner. You can find a link to his site at mine at uh, 700wlw.com. Tell me about the uh, the people, the Americans, that no longer want to be Americans, that are giving well, up their citizenship. Yeah, well, that doesn't work. Uh, we've had the misfortune of representing a couple of those individuals after the fact. Uh, for you to say that I did not wish to be born in this country or to somehow uh, extricate yourself from the Internal Revenue Code, well, that's just whistling in the dark. It means a whole lot of nothing. Again, there are individuals who have managed to slip through the cracks, and they go around and publish these nonsensical treatises explaining how to do it, and the credulous, the gullible, and the plain old stupid jump on board, and they try to finagle their way out of the system. What do they usually get? A $25,000 penalty slapped on them for their trouble. Frequently, if they open a fat mouth, they uh, may become incarcerated once they're convicted of various tax crimes. And it's really just a big waste of everybody's time and money. And those are individuals who are looking to weasel out of their debts end up costing the rest of us a lot of money, the so, real taxpayers. So what they're doing is they're saying, hey, I'm not a citizen, so you can't charge me tax, basically. That's, That's exactly a- right, and it's, it's an empty argument. Uh, I've had people sit in my office, stare me right in the face and say, the 16th Amendment of the Constitution was never ratified, and as such, the government has no authority to collect taxes. Well, that is jive. If anyone tells you this nonsense, tell them, I don't want to hear it, okay, because it's just not going to go anywhere, and you'll probably get caught, and if you do, you'll be sorry. Yeah, but my Uncle Pete hasn't paid taxes in 20 years, and he's, and you always hear about him getting arrested, or or, or, um, um, hauled in then and forced to pay, and in some cases incarcerated. Right. I I saw a story out of Bloomberg. Um, The number of U.S. taxpayers renouncing their citizenship is more than doubled. Are there any that that are doing that? Uh, with legal authority, in other words, maybe they have dual citizenship or something, so they're giving up, give, well, they're giving up the one? That, that does not alleviate your liability to pay taxes in the United States. If you live in the United States and if you earn income in the United States, it doesn't matter whether you're a citizen of the United States or not. You still have a tax liability, and you still have a liability in any of the nations we have treaties with. So I've heard every derivation of this argument, and I am here to tell you, it stinks, it's false, it will get you jammed up, okay? If you feel like going down that road, lay down until the feeling goes away. It won't work. <laughs> well, there goes my plan to save money on taxes. That was my yes, big plan to claim I'm no longer a citizen. Oh, well, that's, that's <laughs> not going to work. Huh? All right, David Seeley, appreciate you joining me. Thank you for having me on, and God bless your listening audience. Got a link to his site at mine, my blog, 700wlw.com, brought to you by the American Trading Company. It's Doc Thompson on the big one, 700wlw. 
Your Fox 19 Storm Tracker forecast. Cloudy skies this afternoon. High around 46. You got some rain coming tonight. Overnight low around 37. It's 43 right now at the big one. And an email from Pat. Doc at 700WLW.com. He said, I'm no fan of Cruz or any of the Hollywood phonies, but I think your argument about their tax shelters has picked the wrong target. We should be more concerned with, with the corruption of politicians in the IRS. This country is well to hell in a handbasket, and we're arguing about the color of the handbags. Um, actually, Patrick, I think you're a little bit off. You, you're right that we certainly need to look at the politicians and the IRS and all these others. But we still need to look at the, the, the people that are taking the credits as well. First and foremost, this credit, credit shouldn't exist. Simply because you have farmland, it's a re- ridiculous notion. You own land, whatever the rate is, pay it. No more loopholes, no more exceptions. Just be done. The tax code in general needs to be simplified. Take it down to a very simple, here's what you pay, here's a percentage, move on. Stop targeting some people because they have more money. Some people be put because they have more. Just take your percentage and go, if we're going to base it on, well, in that case, property taxes. Income, same thing. If you're going to base it on income. If you want a national sales tax, fine. But either way, it could be taken down to a very simple one or two page tax code. So in that regard, you're right. Needs to be simplified. And that should be part of this entire discussion when it comes down to Senate Bill 5 and unions and cutting. It needs to be a part of it. Simplify it. The only reason it's not simplified, there is only one reason that it goes on for thousands of pages. One reason. To give loopholes to somebody. To provide tax breaks or tax shelters to somebody. I don't care who that somebody is. Pay your percentage and move on. It's the only reason it's out there. Now, as far as the politicians and the IRS, of course, they're the ones who are giving these loopholes. Why? We know. We've known for years. Because it benefits them because then they get to hang with those rich people who wanted those tax breaks. And then in some cases, many cases, those elected servants, those government servants, go on to being the rich people themselves. But as far as letting these Hollywood types off the hook, not letting them off either. No, there's nothing wrong with them taking advantage of a legitimate tax credit or break. If they're not stretching it by claiming to be a farmer simply because there's hay on your property or you have a sheep, if they're not game in the system, if they're not lying or cheating or stretching the truth, there's nothing wrong with it. But when it comes to some of them, like Tom Cruise, these are the types of people who come out all the time and say, I'm, I'd pay more taxes. Go along with universal health care. I don't care if it goes up. I'm willing to pay more. But they're not. This just shows their hypocrisy. It's all the way around. Let me give you another example. Sample. Dick Ebersol. He and Susan St. James, they own a 35-acre lot in an upscale subdivision near Telluride. And as I've told you, that, par- that place is beautiful and expensive. It's one of the playgrounds of the rich and famous in America. Upscale subdivision called West Meadow. They purchased the land for $1.8 million. They have a home that is valued at $11 million. And they pay annual taxes, property taxes, of $123. Well, they're farmers. Sure, they've got hay. they got blueberries. Pete Springfield, you're on 700 WLW. Hi, Doc. Hey, Hey, you forgot to mention Michelle Bachman got $250,000 in farm subsidies subsidies too. But I noticed that you say that we're broke a lot now. And I'm looking at a headline from Bloomberg right today that says profit margins at 18-year high. Signal bigger S and P 500 dividends. Okay. Um, so apparently we're not broke. So I, my question is, why do you keep saying that? Maybe wait a, we're just not. Uh, wait a minute. So, choosing to fund the government that we. So wait a minute. Want. So yeah. wait a minute. Um, if you have a um, hundred thousand dollar a year income, Pete, and yet your expensive expenses are five million dollars a year, how long is that going to last? 
Well, that's that's a that's a pretty simple math question. It won't last hardly at all. Yeah, exactly. And that is essentially what the U.S. government is doing. So maybe we need more taxes. Are you willing to pay more taxes? Well, I'm just saying, I'm seeing another article. Are you? Fortune, hang on, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on a second. Pete, Pete, Pete hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. We'll get to that. Are you willing to pay more taxes? 400 just came out. That's the 400 Pete, wealthiest Pete, people. Pete, I'm, are you going to answer my, we'll get to that. I have a question. Answer the question. Are you willing to pay more taxes? I'm willing to pay my fair share. No, 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 Pete. No, 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 no. Hold on. Stop. We'll have a conversation here. Are you willing to pay more taxes? Don't dodge it. Don't sit. Okay. Why haven't you paid more? If you're willing to pay more, Uh, why haven't you willing to pay more? There's a formula that we all have. No, no, no. Why haven't you written a check to pay more? The tax law. Why haven't you? Why have? Why haven't? Who's waiting for the tax law? You're willing to pay more, and you don't think the government has enough money. How come you aren't just writing a check? Why do you say we're broke if the eighteen? Why aren't you answering the question? Why aren't? Why aren't you answering the question? Well, I don't think you're telling the being honest. Why aren't you answering the question? I don't think you're being honest. Why I aren't pay, you I answering the question? More. Then, why that, have, then why haven't you written a check for more? You're just like Goldie Hawn and Tom Goldie Cruise, Hawn. who are saying they're willing to pay more but haven't paid more. So write a check. I'm looking at a headline that says Tell you what, Pete, earning. I'll wait. Hold on a second. I'll wait. You scamper off and get your checkbook and write a check. This, this go, article go get your, go get your pay, go get your Go get your checkbook, Pete. I'm waiting for you. I'm going to put you on hold, and I'm going to come back. And I'll find out how much extra you're going to write to the government. Just stay on hold. I'm going to get a break in here. You, run, want, and, you just, run and get your paycheck or your, uh, your checkbook. And I'll write, uh, wait while you write out a check to the government. You're willing to pay more, then let's see it. Let's see if you're willing to do it. Go and get your paycheck. We'll take a break. Come back and find out how much you're going to write. Stock Thompson, home of the red, 700 WLW. Where should Jim Scott take the 700 WLW morning show fish fry tour? You can send an invite at 700wlw.com. Search Jim. It's brought to you by Dryer Vent Wizard and McCluskey Chevrolet. Stock Thompson on the big one, 700wlw. Before he went to break, Pete said he is willing to pay more taxes. I asked him to go get his checkbook. We'll find out how much of a check he is willing to write to the different levels of government. Pete, how much are you willing to write? Do you have your checkbook? Yeah. Okay. How much are you willing to write? Uh, $20,000. You're writing it now? Yeah. And who are you sending it to? The IRS. You're sending it to, to the federal government. Are you yeah. willing to pay more taxes to your local government as well? Yeah. Mm-hmm. How much are you going to write to them? Five thousand. Five thousand. What about yeah. to the now, state? Now, now let me. Now let me address address. No, wait. Wait a second. We got it to the state. We're, Hang on a second. Wait a minute, Pete. Hang on. Uh, uh, did you get the state as well? How much are you going to give say the state? That we were broke. So Twenty. I'm wait a minute. That... Wait a minute, Pete. I'm going to get to that, man. Relax. Twenty thousand to the feds. All right, and five thousand to your local government. And how much to the state? Uh, 3000 3000 to the state. All right. Uh, how can we prove that you're actually writing those? Because I'm not, because this is ridiculous. I want to talk about No, no, the, no, the, no, the no, 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 it's not uh, ridiculous. Wait a second. Wait a second, Pete. I'm going to get to that. Relax, man. How can I prove that you're really writing these? Because I think you're not. You'll have to come, and, come, on, come here and see. Tell you what you can do. Yeah. Go ahead and uh, and send me a copy of the check. Just blot out all of the the pertinent, uh, like the account information in that. Okay. All right. Okay. And and you're going to do this. Sure. Mm-hmm. And there's uh, no reason not to do this because it's such a it's such a it's such a legitimate thing. Such a legitimate thing. Yeah. Let me hear you write it out. Okay. Look, okay. Here. There you go. That was a pretty no, quick. Okay. That was a pretty quick check, Pete. Okay. See, now, the truth. Okay. Is, the truth is, you're really when not. Do I get gonna, to ask you're my really. Question? You're really not going to send those. That's, when do that's, I get to ask my question? That, tell you what, Pete. I don't trust you, so I'll tell you what. You drop the checks off here, and I'll make sure they get mailed out. I think you're trying to mislead your listeners. No, no, I'm not. Uh, are well, you? I'm go- looking at a headline. Can you drop those off this afternoon? I signal can, better. Can you? Can you drop those off this afternoon? Profit Pete? margins at 18 Pete, year high. Pete, can you drop those off this afternoon? Can you square this, this, these two Pete, thoughts? How many, times, see, how many times do I have to say that we'll get to that? How many times? You're just playing games. I'm no, talking no. about how many, reality. How many times did I say we'll have to get to that? Profit margins. Did I not say we'll years. get to that? See, I'm going to have to let you go if you don't you're hang shouting, out. You're just shouting over me. Do you, want, do you want to get to that or not? I want, to, I want you to do address, you, do to address, you want to get to that or not? I want not? you to address the contradiction between do you, you saying want to broke? get to that or not? This no, is your last chance. I want to get to what I want to talk about. That's what I'm talking about. Do you want to get to it or not? Yes. Okay, then hold on. 
are you going to drop those checks off this afternoon to me so I can make sure they get sent out? Sure. Mm -hmm. All right. Without a doubt. What time will they be here? um, What time are you dropping them off? Four o'clock. Four o'clock. They will be here by four Mm o'clock. All right. Uh, You know what? I'm going to put you on hold. And I want you to give your cell, when we're done with the conversation, I want you to give your number, cell phone, home number, whatever, to my producer, because I'm going to call you back tomorrow morning to now, find out if those checks are here. Is that okay with you? Now I want you uh, to is that Is that question. okay with you? No. Why is that okay with you? Because you just have to trust me. I just have to trust you. Yeah. I'm not willing to trust you because I think you're lying to me. You're not going to send telling, it out. You're telling your listeners the country's broke. See, and there I, it is. You just keep going back to it, Pete, because you're not going to no, do it. I'm going to put you. Just playing a game, I'm going to put you on hold. A serious point. I'm, an, I'm not playing a game. You're the one who said you'd be willing to pay more taxes, maybe, and you're maybe obviously not. Reason, maybe there's a reason you 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 are play you, the jester. Are you willing? Are you, are you are willing to play? Are you willing to pay more taxes or not? Of course I am. I'm then, willing to pay then, my fair share. No, no, not your share. More. You yourself. Are you willing to write a check today or not? Do you want to address See, the you're not point, willing to do, do it. you want to play games? Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to address what you had to say. When? But I'm going to put you on hold right now. And if you are a man of your word, then you will give your phone number to my producer. And I'm going to call you back tomorrow after you drop those checks off. And we'll see if you are really writing 20000 to the feds, 3000 to the state, and 5000 to your local government. If not, you are just the typical hypocrite who says they're willing to pay more taxes but will not strike a check. Now, I told you how we're broke. I laid out the scenario. I said, if you're making $100,000 a year and you spend $5 million a year, how long are you going to be around? And you said, it's not going to work very long. There it is. Stock market can go up 10 times today. And if we're still spending trillions of dollars extra a year over what we bring in, we're done. That's not misleading. You admitted it yourself. You said it's not going to work very long. That's where we are. This year alone, we will overspend $1.6 trillion. That's overspending. That's not the budget. And it's been like that the last couple of years. That's broke. Sorry. Yes, we technically still have money coming in, but eventually we won't. How long would that happen in your household? It's not a game, Pete. That's reality. You're the one playing the game by claiming that you're willing to pay more taxes, but you're certainly not. So we will see if you are a man of your word, See if you drop those checks off this afternoon. I'll assure that uh, I'll send them out to make sure that they're legit. I'll make sure that I'm, you know, no one here is going to see any of your pertinent uh, information. We'll make sure it gets out to those people. You know what? Tell you what, Pete. Better yet, you should probably drop off a cashier's check. It should be a money order or a cashier's check. No, because I don't want you stopping payment either. Make sure it's a a money order or a cashier's check, something you can't stop payment on. Go ahead and drop that off. Doc Thompson, 700 WLD. George from Wild Mike's just dropped off some food for the crew today. Really appreciate that. Wild Mike's Wings. In fact, you can enjoy Wild Mike's Wings. You can get a $20 gift certificate for just 10 As part of Lance's Deal of the Day, just go to 700WLW.com and click on Lance's Deal of the Day, the big banner up there. So frustrating. So frustrating. I'd be more than willing to address what you want, but you got to answer some questions here. I threw it out there. He, uh, Pete left his number. We shall see if he actually drops off checks, cashier's checks, money orders, in the amount of $20,000 for the feds, 3000 state, and 5000 local. If you're willing to pay more taxes, if you're somebody that thinks more money needs to go to the government, then simply get out your checkbook and write a check. But what people like Pete are really saying... They want you to pay more taxes. I'm willing to pay more taxes. No, no. You're wanting everybody else to pay more taxes or you would simply just pay more. Nobody's stopping you from giving the government more money. And they particularly want some people to pay more taxes. Some people they see as needing to pay more taxes. Some people that have too much. He says, fair share. Well, I don't know about you, but I've been paying my fair share and several other people's fair share my entire life. There's a whole lot of people around the tri-state that don't pay any taxes. They get a whole lot of stuff. I see them with their shopping carts filled up. I'm paying for their kids, too. Meanwhile, I'm struggling to pay for my son. So fair share. Shouldn't fair share be everybody pays? See, not in people's minds like him. 
People like Pete covet what other people have. They're jealous of people that have a lot of money. I would like to have it, but I don't want theirs. I just want to make mine and be left alone to keep what I have. So for people like him, they're not willing to pay more. It's just like Goldie Hawn, just like Tom Cruise and Michael Moore. Nothing stopping them from giving their millions of dollars away. But instead of giving it away, they're actually trying to keep all of it. 